problem. Hey guys, welcome back to my bedroom. This is one of those talky vlogs where I talk about something important to me, but I'm also going to deep throat a banana to promote condoms, so don't click off. Anyways, it's December, Christmas time, a time when everyone I know is drunk every night because it's the holidays. I'm not sure how many of you guys know this about me, but I'm currently abstaining from getting drunk or stoned or any of that fun stuff. The scary term is sober, and I've been afflicted by this ailment since February 2015. More on this after a word from our sponsors. Hi there, Max Emerson here, coming to you from a different part of my bedroom to talk to you about skin brand condoms. They're easily the most comfortable condoms I've ever used. Andres isn't here right now, so I'll have to show you how to use them on this banana. First, you undress. <laughs> Next, you put the condom on. Now, you can use your hand, but you get bonus points for using your mouth. Let me try that again. See? It's that easy. For more about condoms, please visit the link in the video description featuring an interview and editorial I did with Skin when I was in Japan this fall. And we're back. If you forgot what we were talking about just because I was deep throating a banana, this video is about my sobriety. Fortunately, I don't have a super cathartic rock bottom story like some of my other sober friends. I didn't wake up in a pool of my own vomit, I didn't ruin my career as an international male underpants supermodel, and I didn't kill anyone that I know of. In fact, usually when partying, I'm almost always the babysitter. In college, I would go shot for shot with a 300 pound Hawaiian dude and somehow end up being the one who had to scrape that big kahuna off the sidewalk and get them home. I was just getting tired of it, but I couldn't seem to find a convenient enough time to quit for any extended period. There's always a party somewhere with free booze, there's always a friend visiting, a birthday to celebrate, and a reason to get blitzed. There is literally no end to the excuses I could come up with to light up a spliff or drink some bourbon. The real reason I wanted to quit was for work. I've never thought of modeling as an actual career, but up to this point, I didn't feel like the quality of my other work as an actor or a writer was good enough to support me on its own. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I would doubt myself, so I would distract myself by having a good time and not log the hours needed to really master the skills necessary to break into these new careers. Instead of getting my ass in the seat and working, writing for at least an hour a day, I'd smoke a J and just go chill at the beach. It wasn't rock bottom, it was just rock middle. Despite being reasonably slutty when single, I'm hyper paranoid about STIs to the point where if some guy tried to raw dog with me on a first date, justifying it by saying they're on prep, there would be no second date. I would get checked out every two months, which is so often that the people working the counter of the clinic would just giggle when I walked in and then leave all clear messages on my Instagram page. So, so the day before Valentine's 2015, it happened. I tested positive for gonorrhea in my throat. I have no idea how it got there. You take antibiotics to treat it, so that meant a week of no booze and no sex. I said to myself, let's make it a month, because let's be honest, this was just the last straw that broke the camel's back. Valentine's was the next day, and I suddenly realized that there were two or three people fully expecting me to be their date by default. That sounds a lot cooler and more flattering than it really was. I felt like a total jerk. And I, being an adult, opted to run away to Mexico with a straight friend of mine. We ended up in Cabo which is probably the best place to kick off a sober streak. I'm serious, I mean, if you can stay sober in Cabo during a long weekend, you're good to go. Now, in truth, the first week was easy. It was once I got back home and was forced to settle into new habits and patterns that it got hard emotionally. Basically, there wasn't any one thing that was really going wrong in my life, but there was definitely a lot of little things that I hadn't been dealing with. 
Anytime I had a, a growing sense of anxiety, I'd just roll up a J or have a drink or two and conclude that whatever I was worrying about was not a big deal, which it wasn't. The problem is that I would conveniently forget to deal with that thing, and those things can add up. Basically, after two weeks of being sober, all of those little things hit at once. Like I was paralyzed and agitated, I had trouble sleeping and sitting still, and I just felt ashamed for letting any of these things go as far as they had. I never went to AA, but I appreciate that it works, because you have to own your BS within a community of supportive but discerning people. I am extremely lucky to have a circle of people in my life that are able to serve as that same sort of support. Obviously, you lose a lot of friends when you stop partying, but eventually you drift towards people with whom you share more meaningful connections and common bonds. To be honest, I've always been a super horny and addictive person. For quite a while, I switched my addiction to drugs and alcohol to an addiction to a lot of random sex. Like, a lot. I pretty much slept with all of my Instagram followers. Hey. Now, there's nothing wrong with random sex as long as you're being safe. But deep down, I knew I wanted something more meaningful than just showing off my ability to deep throat a banana or a bunch of bananas. The thing about changing one habit is that you end up changing all of them. For me, being stone cold sober has served as a catalyst to change the way I eat, work, and connect with people. Everything is improved. I'm off book for auditions three times faster, I spend less time rewriting, my relationships are considerably stronger, and I'm less afraid to pursue my largest ambitions. I haven't told myself that I'll never drink again, but at the moment, the benefits I'm getting from abstaining are totally outweighing the immediate gratification of a good buzz. It's a constant reminder to make the better long-term choices rather than just the easy ones. To be totally honest, I was sober well over a year before I started acting like a sober person. But we all get there in our own time. Anyways, I hope my story hasn't bummed you out or bored you or made you feel like I'm diminishing whatever struggle you might be having right now because it's totally different for every person. I simply wanted to share this story because people ask me about it a lot, and if this video helps one person, then it was worth it. I love you guys to death. Thank you for following my journey and supporting my projects. I would not be where I am without you guys. So, please do not forget to check out the interview I did for Skin Condoms in Japan. They're giving away free condoms, so there's that. That's totally worth it, and I'll see you guys next week. Much love.